my professional grown up career, I guess I'll call it, it's probably been going for just over a decade, coming up to 12 years now. And I guess I would say it's really focused on the people space or people in general. Um, I kind of started uh, my career in selling outdoor media packages at uh, live events such as the Sydney Royal Easter Show or the Echo in Queensland. Um, there was also like live events for different uh, World Cups. Um, and it would be basically getting into contact with marketing, heads of marketing. It's a last minute opportunity. Do you have a TVC that you're currently running? Do you want to be at a live event? Um, so that was kind of my first step into a professional career. And I kind of took that role on because I wanted to wear a suit. Um, was my initial motivation. Um, but then from then on, I kind of like moved into more uh, the recruitment space. I went to London for four years and did SAP recruitment, came back to Australia, um, transitioned from, I guess, agency recruitment into talent acquisition and worked for Spotify for four years. Um, and then more recently, I did a two year stint with Safety Culture when they went through that crazy growth period from like 50 people to 350 went through Series B and Series C. And come full circle to current day, I've got my own company, which I co-founded with Nick Ingle called Lab17. And we help uh, scaling tech businesses uh, build out their teams. And we work with companies that typically anywhere between Series A to Series C. I mean, I think from an early stage, I've like always like been in my professional career realized I'm good with kind of relationship building. Um, when I started out in doing, uh, I guess, uh, outdoor sales uh, for media, I found that a little bit too cutthroat and maybe just insert my suit my personality. Um, that was like, you know, boiler room hardcore sales, whereas I'm kind of more of a, a relationship builder. I'd say I'm not a good salesperson, but I'm a good account manager and I'm good at process. So I think the transition from going from, you know, sales to recruitment kind of pushed me into that more of an account management type of opportunity um, because I kind of transitioned to a role where there wasn't too much of a BD element to it. Um, and then as I continued to kind of focus on recruitment, I saw that, you know, the internal um, opportunities were continuing to grow, especially with the growth of tech in general. So the transition to a talent acquisition role and representing, you know, one brand in market, being a part of a growth journey, um, working with hiring managers and stakeholders to build up their teams and I guess helping companies realize their vision just really appealed to me. Um, the best career advice was something actually more recent and it was from um, someone who I hired into safety culture in, in a um, senior role um, in product marketing. And you kind of mentioned that like you should always kind of focus on when it comes to your next role or when you start thinking about that next opportunity, you should always position yourself two roles ahead of where you think you should be. Um, and I kind of thought that like when he first said it, I was like, didn't really understand it, but then it just made a lot of sense. Like, I don't think in terms of your own growth and what you have to offer, if you only think about making it, you know, a transition, um, a horizontal transition or going for a role that you're already doing, you're not pushing yourself and you're not obviously, um, more importantly, opening yourself up to um, maybe sh falling short or being vulnerable. So. Yeah, I think that's probably one of the best things I've heard more recently, like, you know, aim for two roles where you, you want to be in the future rather than just what you're doing today. I wish I knew more about um, tech now that I'm working in tech so much. Um, but I think I, I just wish um, that there was more of a focus on, um, I guess, you know, vulnerability and not and being able to get things wrong. Like, I don't think, you know, if I, go back 10 years ago, I don't think there was so much of an emphasis on making mistakes or actually making mistakes all right. Like, what do you learn from it? How do you go again? I think back then it was just more like results, results, results. You're not getting the results, you're out the door. So definitely think there's been a big sort of culture shift and a, a better understanding of what your potential is by making mistakes and being vulnerable. Um, so I think if I knew that back then, probably would have made um, you know, quite a few different decisions, but I also think it would have kind of sped up where I am today in terms of being vulnerable, in terms of you know, going into situations where you may not know or may not have all the right answers, but that's okay as well. Um, I think you know, work culture and the way that we you know, approach things um, have come like a long way since then as well. Funnily enough, I think, uh, <laughs> I actually think, you know, 
in a way, I haven't made my biggest mistake yet. And I think my biggest mistake was that I thought it was my biggest mistake when I made it. But now that I like, I, now that I look back over, you know, working for 10 years and now that I've got my own business as well and building something um, at Lab 17 with Nick Ingle, it's like I look back some of the things I beat myself up over or some of the things that I, mistakes that I thought were the biggest mistake of my life. And I now realize that I still haven't made that biggest mistake yet. So if anything, I may be like beating myself up about playing it too safe today. So I'm actually looking forward to hopefully making the biggest mistake of my life um, in the future. I think the key to my success has been kind of uh, perseverance, um, resilience, but more importantly, I've always kind of, you know, I, I've lived, lived in Sydney for the past 10 years. I was in London for four years as well. Um, but I've actually come from Darwin, um, which is like a really small town in the north of Australia. So I've always kind of played the underdog role. Like I played a lot of sports growing up. Um, I've, you know, played in representative teams for the Northern Territory, but we would play against other states in Australia, which were just miles ahead of us. They had way better development programs. They all seem to be a lot bigger than us as well. So I don't know what they were eating, but um, I've always kind of come from a position of being an underdog. And I think that that's kind of um, given me a great grounding in terms of my approach and the way I sort of conduct myself and interact with people. But it's always kind of given me this ability to, like if my back's up against the wall, that's probably where I actually perform the best. Um, so I think that underdog tag, being resilient, um, and kind of just always trying to do more than you think you're capable of is, has probably been, yeah, the biggest asset for me in my career.